We're Mark and Alice, a couple who left the UK in search of somewhere to build a homestead and connect with nature. This led us to Alentejo, Portugal. Follow us on our journey as we we'll build our homestead, learn to live more self-sufficiently and acquire new skills in farming, permaculture and more. Hello and welcome back to another bad hair day. <laughs> yeah, welcome back to our farm here in Alentejo. The weather is lovely at the moment. It's like early to mid twenties. So uh, this is like my ideal temperature. But anyway, so we have quite a lot of different plans for the garden and the growing space that we plan to do during the winter. And the first one we wanted to get done is we wanted to continue to grow stuff through, throughout the winter is the polytunnel. So as I mentioned in a couple of the previous videos, uh, we wanted to uh, basically redesign it. The raised beds we've got in there don't really retain water very well. So I think we're going to just completely redesign it. So I'll just talk you through what we've got in here at the moment. Okay, so as you can see, we've got loads of these, I think they're three foot by six foot uh, raised beds around. And uh, we've got various stuff still growing in here, uh, aubergines, although that they're they're a bit like pale in color. Normally they're like bright purple. Melons, I think I harvested maybe the last one we're gonna get from there yesterday. Then we've got this little one growing. And then we've got like various other things growing on in here. These big chili plant, still got peppers, tomatoes, it's still going. I can't believe the tomatoes are still, still doing really well. Although the plants are starting to die off now. Yeah, basically what we're gonna do is take all of this out and have two two foot beds are going down on either side of the polytunnel and then have a four foot bed coming down the middle uh, just to make it easier for us to access things at the moment because they're three feet out it's hard to get to stuff at the back sometimes especially where i've like overcrowded a few areas at the back so obviously we're going to have to rip out a lot of these beds and stuff we've got this sort of weed matting on the floor. So I feel like it would probably be a good idea to keep that in. So I probably have to cut through the, I probably have to cut through that to make way for the beds. Maybe have to blow torch them because uh, I think when you cut them, they do fray quite a lot. So that might be an option, although I didn't really want to kind of, you know, release any toxicity into the, to the ground. And I think for this area here, we're actually going to, have like a space for like a nursery area so just to put seedlings and things like that we don't really need that much growing space i think because we'll be making the most of this side with those with those beds i think that this area we could we could leave into more of a, a good space i mean as i mentioned in one of the other videos we have actually got another polytunnel which we, we wanted to use for sort of growing more exotic and tropical plants we need to that up at some point so in terms of the irrigation for here as well at the moment we've got these small drippers um, it's really basic system running off ibc's which are those ones over there it's likely that i would keep the ibc system for now but what i want to do is run drip piping along the the beds and then have a single large pipe here probably put a connection here so that I can switch it to the electric pump system when we have that all set up properly as I re really need to redesign that system as well which is a bit annoying because I only uh, did that this year. So yeah basically this is probably going to take a little while to do so I'm not sure when this video would actually come out. I think we're just going to get on with starting to clear it out um, obviously try and keep stuff in there that's already growing as I suspect a lot of it would take a bit of time and then hopefully we would have uh, a good setup ready for ready for actually growing stuff uh, through the winter. Yeah, we'll see how it goes and I'll keep you updated.
so I've just got rotten tomato all over me. It stinks as well. So after a little break and a hose shower, just before I give you a quick update, so I've moved to all this uh, so far, which is about three beds. Uh, so I'm just gonna keep this one in for now and this one, just because I don't really need this space right now. And so I'm just gonna clear this um, up to here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna clear out this bed as well. And then what I'll do is I'll mark out where the new beds are gonna go. And then I'll have to, kind of um, work out how I'm gonna cut down or burn or whatever the the weed mat in. So I just thought if I do this side first, that's fine. I mean, I don't really wanna pull these up because the peppers are actually still producing quite a lot. Like most of these tomatoes and stuff were dead. This was like tomatoes and cucumbers. Stuff in here was pretty much dead as well. Still got tomatoes sort of just about growing in these ones as well. Peppers and chilies here. Still got quite a lot of tomatoes and peppers there as well. So probably gonna leave those till last. So to be honest with you, if I take this out, then I think that would give me something to work off to begin with. And then obviously I can just move across when I need to. Like I said, I don't really wanna pull stuff out that's still growing because um, yeah, it just seems like a bit of a waste otherwise. But we've already got so many peppers and tomatoes up at the house that really sure what else we're going to do with them but uh, yeah, I need to work out where I'm going to put these chili plants as well so yeah I'll keep going with it Okay, so got quite a bit done today. Cleared out these beds as well. The chili plants are put in pots. And I marked out where I'm gonna put the first bed, just with this bamboo and string. So yeah, I'm pretty exhausted now, so I just, I think I'm gonna leave it for today. And I did do some research and I think that I'm going to use a, a soldering iron to cut away the weed membrane. I think that seems like the best method. Um, I've seen people use like blow torches and stuff, but it's still sort of quite warm here at the moment, so I don't really wanna use a flame and using a knife just makes it fray. That's as far as I'm gonna go today, I think.
I just finished the border so what I'm going to do now is use this little soldering iron I bought from Brico Marche for about 9 euros uh, to try and cut the weed membrane. Hopefully it doesn't fray so here we go. decided to fork up the ground underneath uh, just to break up some of the more compacted soil but in general it's actually quite moist and good quality there was like some black kind of biochar underneath as well so I feel like the soil has got a lot of nutrients in there and now I'm just gonna pop a layer of cardboard on top Okay, so I just got the first bed done. I'm uh, pretty happy with it. It turned out a little better than expected. So, yeah, I've just put, I think it was five bags of compost on here. It's only like a couple of inches, really. I've got this 16 mil drip pipe in, so it's already got the holes in. And uh, I'm gonna lay this out, obviously not connect it just yet. I'm just gonna lay this part out just so it's done. And then obviously I can just have the attach the right fittings when I want to connect the whole system. So I need, still need to do this side. A lot of the tomato plants are dying off. I don't know whether it'll be worth just ripping them out for now and then leaving the middle bed until last because otherwise I'm not going to be able to continue. So didn't really want to rip stuff out, but I think in the grand scheme of things, you know, we've got like loads of, we've had loads of tomatoes and peppers from here already. Yeah, I think it might be just a good time just to crack on with the rest of this. So I also did is just went along and marked where the the plants will be planted. So obviously in the, in line with this, and then the first ones here. So meet in the middle. I think it just makes it easier for me to work out where I need to lay the irrigation. So yeah, should work out alright. So you might have guessed this is not for a cup of tea. Basically, the pipes are really difficult to get in the little fittings. So I've got these, these ones here. These ones are a bit easier to get in actually. So we've got these ones here. So when you try and put them in, normally they don't go all the way and then they're really hard to get back out, but they do leak a little bit. So I found the best method is to just put the pipe in warm water. Well, it's very hot water actually. For some seconds. They should just slide on really easily, which is cool. Oh, it's super hot. It's not quite as I planned it. So this pipe's buckling a bit here, but it's close enough, I think. I wasn't really happy with swinging the pipe around there, so I just made a hole in the bed side and then the pipe would just run down here. It would go to 25 mil, and then this would basically connect to like a, a T and two adapters here, which would then feed the four foot beds and then another one there, which would then feed the other two foot wide bed. And then that would then go out and connect to the IBCs at the top. Glad I did just one at a time because I think it just gave me like a better idea of what I want to do for the rest of it. So I think that'll I think that'll be enough on this bed. I don't think I need to do anything else. Good morning. 
it's the next day so it got a bit hot in the polytunnel yesterday and um, I broke a tool that I was using which I needed to <laughs> to carry on so I thought I'd just give it a rest and um, yeah start again this morning uh, it's nice and cool so it's, it's um, good to get on with it there's a few things I've got to do first one being I've got some looks like some holes in here I didn't know whether how that's happened but luckily when I purchased the other polytunnel which we haven't put up yet I bought this um, polytunnel like repair tape so I'm just gonna do that and then I've got to finish this bed so I've just got to just got to level the the ends out a little bit bash this little wooden thing in to screw it in at the back cut out the weed membrane again fork it up then put a layer of cardboard on and finally finish it off with compost and again i'm going to leave this middle bit for for now i think that that's going to be more than enough growing space just for just to get us started for the the winter and then obviously i can go go and do this within the next couple of weeks i expect as you see i did the irrigation yesterday i think i showed you that already so yeah i'll get on with this now So as you can see, we've got like these vole holes here. So this is a kind of bit of a trade-off we have to make with um, planting stuff into the ground as obviously they can get to the roots a lot easier. We didn't have that much problem with them in the other veg garden. There were a few times that they got a few vegetables and you could tell that they've eaten them, but not it's not enough to put me off changing the way we plant in here. And as you can see, like the, the ground is pretty moist as well, which is good. So I think that it's all going to be good. So yeah, I'm just going to carry on with it now. The latest update is we have the second bed done. So we've uh, obviously cardboard it and everything. And I've done the irrigation now. This time I uh, drilled a hole here. And basically I'm gonna have a 25 mil pipe going up to here and probably out the polytunnel there or further along where the current piping comes in. Bon dia. So I'm hoping that I can get the polytunnel done today. Uh, it kind of dawned on me that I've got so much to catch up on. Uh, so the I'm in the veg garden now and there's just literally weeds everywhere. Obviously we haven't weeded since we uh, since we left for the UK. So we need to get on with that. And also once I've got the beds done in the polytunnel, uh, obviously we can start seeding. Um, we should, probably should have started that a little bit already, but uh, again, you know, like we've been swamped with stuff. And also I really need to make a couple of improvements to the rainwater harvesting system. I'll uh, update you in another video about that. Um, but yeah, I'll get on with the polytunnel. And yeah, my, my plan is to get it all done today. At least the beds and the irrigation at the bottom end. The top end here, um, obviously I'm just gonna leave the aubergines in. I'm gonna leave all the other stuff in pots I've got here. And then I'm gonna maybe transplant some of the peppers and chilies into here just for now. So, um, so yeah, hopefully I'll be, have it all done today.
sorry for missing out the last bit um basically the camera got too hot and i didn't realize so the time lapse stopped so since then i've obviously done quite a bit um i had to fork all this up unfortunately it was bone dry underneath so it was the ground was so hard so i spent ages watering it forking it up then watering again and and really um uh, sort of breaking it down which uh, seemed to work okay there's some areas where they're quite moist but generally it was it wasn't great so the beds are not completely straight it seems to be very difficult to get any straight wood and this was some wood I had left over from uh, another project anyway so yeah basically I've got the cardboard in and I've got the compost in as well what I'm going to do now is just uh, pipe up the rest of the irrigation system so that'll be done and that's uh the bigger job over and done with and then this side of the polytunnel will be done and ready for some winter planting so like i said we've got to do some seeding and everything but at least it's uh at least it's there explain why it gets so dirty. Anyway, so this is part of the video where I didn't switch the microphone on. So basically I'm just explaining the irrigation system. So the 25 mil pipe, the big pipe comes um, straight from the IBCs, uh, which has a timer on it. And then it feeds the drip pipe in, which uh, I did a little test out and it works really well, even though the IBCs weren't that full, so there wasn't much pressure. So yeah, I'm really happy with how that uh, turned out. I'm glad I invested the time into making a good system this time and yeah I'm sure this is going to last a long time. So that's the polytunnel done. Happy with how this side turned out and the irrigation works perfectly and the beds seem to uh, be okay. Obviously I have got these borders around, borders around the bed. They are slightly raised, probably a little bit more raised than I wanted them to be but um, the, obviously the compost and everything will break down over time and I assume in the future I'll probably remove the borders, but I think for now that they're okay. As you can see that they're not very straight at all. Um, I don't know why, but it seems impossible to get any straight wood in Portugal, but yeah, um, they, they'll they do the job for sure. Thanks for watching. Please do consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video. I'm... So there's a few things... Oh. <laughs>